and Sean Parker, because of Napster, knew that as well, angel investors at the time, uh, that we could really help work with all these VCs and get them to close around quickly and efficiently. Because the process can be really painful if you don't have forcing functions. Did you essentially orchestrate a bidding war? And I, uh, uh, with Facebook, no, I did not. No, um, I. We triaged the list of about 20 VCs that we wanted to go to. They were already talking to the Washington Post, Don Graham. Don Graham offered a 50 million valuation. Um, and Zuck and Parker called me when they got out of the office and they, Ron, Ron, we got a $50 million valuation from, from uh, Don Graham. And I go, hey, go back in. I don't think you heard him right. I bet you he said $5 million. No, no, he said $50 million. I said, hurry up and get it to happen. Uh, so in this case, uh, I didn't need to do anything. In that process, Jim Breyer was looking at the company and decided to offer – uh, 80 million, I think it was 80 million pre 90 million post, uh, which, you know, that, that was the rebirth of Excel right there after the bubble. Um, was so Jim Breyer did the funding. Was, was that Google's pre money series A? Google's pre money was 75 million pre. Do you think it was a coincidence? There was a little more at Facebook. Yeah. I, I would say it's a coincidence, but hmm. all right. Because, like, uh, if, if I wanted to get Zuckerberg to take my money, I would offer him a little bit more than Google so got. There Don Graham was at Facebook first, um, and I I always felt bad that – and Don Graham was a gentleman about saying, hey, Excel is offering $30 million more than me. Uh, Excel should be your VC. And fast forward five years, Don Graham's on the board of Facebook today. Uh, which I think is awesome because Don Graham was a mentor to Mark Zuckerberg in the early days. Did any VCs say no? Mark went and spent two weeks at the Post just following Don Graham around while the company was growing like a weed because hmm. he wanted to see what a CEO did. And he followed someone in the journalism business. Yeah. Um, so what was I going to ask? Uh, darn, I've completely forgotten. I was so surprised by that. Um, oh, yes. Did any VCs say no to Facebook? In that round? Yes. Are there any that just said no, that it's not going to work? Oh, I have the emails. <laughs> like, and, and I am not naming them. Okay, no, I won't ask you. I want to know privately. Hey, hey, this is really this is really early days. Yeah. Um, did they say no because they didn't believe in the business? Or did they say no because the price was too high? No, did not believe in the business. This is wacky. Like the social network for college students. Yeah, yeah. Right, like, yeah. who cares? Um... <laughs> So let's see. Um, do you do you know incidentally uh, what multiple you got on Google? Uh, it was Google. 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 I don't think so. No. <laughs> no. Uh, um, uh, it, 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 roughly three three hundred to one. Three hundred. That's pretty uh, good. If you sold at the all time high, you would get like seven hundred dollars for each dollar you invested. All-time high might be in the future. Yes. <laughs> the all-time high for Google is definitely in the future. Um, do you think Larry and Sergey knew that they were going to be that big? Um, no. D in fact, definitely not. Um, which makes me think of a story. Can I? Yes. Uh, how are we doing on time? we got um, a couple more minutes. We're doing but, fine. But, but, but this is a good story. So, so Ben Horowitz showed his picture with Warren Buffett at a party at my home when he talked. It was his first slide. Um, <laughs> See, Ron is, Ron is secretly behind everything. At that, at that ver attending that party along with, uh, with Ben, uh, and this party was sponsored by Angel Investors at the time, which was my fund at the time. <clears throat> and we had in our yard every internet person known to man, including Sean Parker, Sean Fanning, and Larry and Sergey. Uh, and, and it was in 1998, let's say. So Google was like one year old, Napster probably a year and a half old. And the day of this 
party, uh, Napster was at its all-time high. 40 million users. Sean Parker has been on the cover of every major magazine in America within three weeks. And major magazines in America don't put the same guy on the cover. But Napster was so disruptive, they said, the hell with it. This kid's got to go on the cover. Sean Fanning is really famous. He is the shyest person on the earth, not a malicious bone in his body. Um, he had a keeper with him at the party. Even though I knew him really well, he was like, you know, I don't like all this attention. Um, so Larry and Sergey say, hey, will you introduce us to Fanning? I go, of course I will. And Google is barely known. Probably a, a third of the people at this party, you would say Google, and they'd say, I've heard it, but you know, what do they do? So I take them up and I say, to Fanning, I said, this will be the biggest company on earth someday because their search results are so accurate and so good. And Fanning is fascinated, talks to him, shake hands. We, go, we walk away, and Larry and Sergey follow me, and I go, is there somebody else you want to meet? And they go, no, no, we have to talk to you. They said, it is so frustrating. We will, we will never be famous like him. <laughs> and they were looking at me like, tell us we're right. And I said, you guys are so wrong. Because you're going to make money while this poor guy fights with the record labels. Um, yeah. Um, let's not end on that note. No, no, no. We won't end with that. Um, I'll, we'll end with the question everybody in this audience, well, a lot of people in this audience probably want to know, which is how do they get your money? Like, what you, makes you want to invest in somebody? Well, um, we invest in people first. Um, so they have to be people. Yeah. <laughs> but they, 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 have to, they, they have to be people with personalities, with drive. They know it's 24 by 7. Um, they have to be a leader because if you're going to build a big company, you have to have uh, enough charisma to get other people to work on your team. You, you've got it's to recruit a team. Just saying this. Yeah. Um, so... And determination, what what Jessica talked about, you you have to be completely fearless. Um, How can you tell when you meet somebody that they have these qualities? Uh, In fact, I, I want to know this myself. Well, I've been doing it so long that that I can just tell. After ten minutes, I've made up my mind. So the SV team, you know, I have to keep saying, "Hey, I don't want to come across as rude," but after ten minutes, I've decided if I like the company or not. Because I'm looking at the personality of the individual. You now, can they build a great company? So there's like a 50, I, I have an algorithm in my brain that goes through like 50 traits. That person's got it. But you don't have the I want to code. invest. I don't, I'm not, I really don't care what the company does today. I want to invest in that entrepreneur's company like their sixth, seventh, eighth company. You know, it's a lifelong commitment. I don't think other investors look at it that way. Hmm. It's not very useful advice. Either you got it or you don't. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm looking for traits oh. that are all identifiable. You know, are you a good communicator? Are you a leader? Are you driven? You can tell that when you're talking to somebody. I suppose the good news is if the person has these traits, even if they don't think they would necessarily make a good startup founder or something like that, you'll back them while they figure it out. Of course we will, right? Yeah. That's what's unique about SV Angel. The other thing is product focus. So if you look at the success of Facebook and Pinterest and Square, um, these founders are focused on the product, and they're focused on the product because they know if the product's good, they're going to have a happy customer. They care almost too much about it. Oh, you can like never care too much. Craftsmen who are like obsessed yeah, yeah, yeah. with they the are quality craftsmen. That you know, in this day and age, so much of the success is about UI. So if you look at Ben Silverman, Jack Dorsey, uh, and, and, uh, and Zuck, they, they care about happy users. And in a perfect world, 
they will go back in their hovel and just make their product great. They they hate coming out in public. It takes them away from from the brass ring, which is millions and millions of happy customers. Robert, there's no Q and A. We, part we of don't talk. have Q and A. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> On that awkward note, <laughs> <laughs> these press guys, you know. Thanks, Ron. Oh. <laughs>